Good afternoon, everyone. Today is uh, Thursday, March 3rd, 2022. This is the Senate Transportation Finance and Policy uh, Committee. Uh, today we have a number of bills that we have put on. I don't know whether we're going to get through all of them. We're going to do the best that we can. Uh, I will tell you that uh, just by way of explanation, some of these bills today will be laid over. Some will be uh, sent out uh, for hearings in other committees with jurisdiction. Uh, Senate file 3582, you will see down uh, at the bottom, that is the bill that contains all of these provisions and the idea is that we are spinning off a number of smaller bills that we will be taking up today all of the bills that are on the sheet or the agenda today are contained uh, within senate file 3582 and the idea is that these bills will then come back to us and in effect we are going to have uh, a mini omnibus bill uh, on the uh, driver and vehicle services report uh, we also have uh, with us today uh, Mr. King and his, uh, and his associates uh, who prepared the, uh, the report for us, and they are here. They testified on Tuesday on the report. They are here available to answer any questions that you may have on the bill. Um, and... Um, I, we have until uh, 4.30. I can go over a little bit if need be, but uh, specifically, I would like to get through the first three for sure, the first three bills for sure, uh, and then we're going to see if we can have time for any more after that. So that's sort of the explanation as to what we are doing today. Uh, Senator Dibble, uh, anything to add uh, it, uh, regarding the proceedings for today? No, uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, it's a, a, a big agenda of, of a lot of interesting bills. Um, I think you'll see that our, our side, our caucus is pretty interested in some of these ideas that flow out of the King report. So I appreciate it. Thank Good. you. Good. Thank you, Senator Dibble. Uh, with that, we will begin with the, uh, with the first bill, Senator Housley's uh, bill, Senate file 3609. Senator Housley. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, before you is Senate file 3609. Um, this is a bill that was also based off the recommendations of the DVS independent expert review. Uh, the reason I wanted to carry this bill is this fall, um, I went to a gopher hockey game. And at most of the venues these days, you can't bring in a, a purse or it has to be clear, but I, I like to go to these things and I just bring my driver's license because of course my credit card is on the phone. So if I wanna get a beer or anything, I have to have my driver's license with me. Um, well, I ended up losing my driver's license at the Gopher game when I went in to take my phone out. Um, and so then I had to go to DVS, get another driver's license, and this is my third driver's license in two years. So I, I can't be the only one who does this. Yeah, I know you think it's funny. Um, but, um, so then that night, we went out to dinner, and my daughter's boyfriend, who's from Colorado, um, he wanted to order a beer at dinner, and they asked for his ID, and he popped out his phone, and his driver's license was right on his phone. And I was like, get out of town. How, how'd you do that? He said, oh, we've had it for a couple of years. So that's when I started asking um, staff, how come we don't have that here? I think it would make things a lot easier. And that was the genesis of the bill, is me losing my driver's license. Uh, so... I mean, we have so many things on our phones right now. We have our plane tickets, we have credit cards, Apple Pay, we have Netflix shows, we have our car insurance, we have our Amazon return QR codes, um, our sporting events tickets are on our phones, our health insurance, my alarm system's on. I mean, you can just go to your sporting events with just your phone these days. So I think it, it makes sense that we, we get up to the, uh, this century and um, look into getting mobile driver's license. Um, and... So in addition to that, there's, there's actually 30 other states that are looking into this, and I think there's um, over 10 that have now made mobile driver's license as part of their um, platform. Um, but also what the bill does, it provides for electronic titles. Um, I don't know if you've ever gone to Mr. sell Chair? your car and you... Oh, am I a mute? Mr. Chair? Well, y'all just missed a really good story. <laughs> anyway, this is about electronic driver's license. Um, 
if you ever go to sell your car and, and you're scrounging through your old file cabinets looking for that title, that hasn't happened to me either. Um, this would also look into uh, electronic titles. This, would, this bill would require DVS to investigate the possibility of, of moving from physical to digital versions of documentations, including, but not limited to, the, the mobile driver's licenses, um, electronic titles, uh, mobile facial software for ID. You, uh, we always have to go to the DVS to get our picture taken for the driver's license. Um, this would, I mean, you can get your eyeglasses by taking a picture of yourself, so I think we can handle taking a picture of ourselves for a driver's license. Um, digital tabs, liens, disability, play cards, and um, crash reports. Um, and then DVS would give a report to the legislature by December 15th, 2022 detailing what other states have done, um, recommendations on how to ensure the data security and privacy, estimated costs, an estimated timeline, and necessary statutory changes. So that, Mr. Chair, in essence, is what this two-page bill does. Thank you, Senator Housley. Uh, any questions from any members of either Senator Housley or uh, any of uh, Mr. King and his staffs uh, that prepared the report, they are, they're sitting off to my right in the first row. Any questions, members? Senator Howe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, Senator Housley, would this require to shift to the digital or just make it an option? Senator Housley. Uh, Mr. Chair and Senator Howe, I think that would be something that we would look at after they do the, the report, um, if they would recommend having the option to do both. But I can tell you, I think we most would choose the digital. But I know there are some people that don't operate on their phone all the time that would probably still rather have a, a physical one. Any other questions from any, any members? Seeing none, oh, I'm sorry, Senator Dibble. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to express uh, support um, for this bill and this idea, and thank Senator Housley for bringing it. I think it's um, to, for all the reasons that she cited, and we do so much on our phones. Half or more of the things that she listed, I do with my phone, too. Um, so I think the time has come to look at this. I think it's a good innovation. Thanks. Thank you, Senator Dibble. And, but, Mr. Chair, yes, it is a two-page bill. I only have one page. Oh, is there not a bet? Oh, no, there's only one. All right. My well, notes on the other side, sorry. Boiled it down to its essential parts. <laughs> Economy of, of verbs, we like that, thanks. Yes. <laughs> uh, and, and it will be coming back, so. Okay, uh, Senator Pratt, uh, would you care to move? This is to be re-referred to the uh, Technology and Reform Committee. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. I move uh, Senate file 3609 pass and be referred to the Committee on Technology and Reform. All those in favor of Senator Pratt's motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The motion passes and the bill is on its way to technology and reform. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Senator Dibble. There's room on the bill. Thank you, Senator Housley. <laughs> I also uh, just was passed to note that uh, Mr. Zong from uh, DVS is uh, also available for questions. Where There you are. Nice to see you. Uh, he is available uh, for any questions that members may also have. The next bill up uh, before us is Senator Chamberlain's bill, Senate file 3650. <clears throat> Senator Chamberlain, welcome to the committee. Um, Thank you. Uh, and whenever you are ready, Senator Chamberlain, to your bill 3650. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. This is a bill to extend the renewal time for Minnesota driver's licenses, motorcycle licenses, and IDs uh, from four years to eight years. Um, obviously, what, you know, looking just 
looking through the um, report of driver vehicle services, you know, uh, there is strain on the system and it calls in a question, what, are, what can we do more efficiently, effectively, what don't we need to do? And one of the things that was brought to my attention is perhaps we don't need to renew our licenses every four years, perhaps we can put it off to, uh, eight years. I know I don't have all the numbers in front of me, but several states, many states uh, are much longer than Minnesota's at four years. So um, something we can change, save a little money, save a little time, reduce pressure, is perhaps move our renewal times for licenses and IDs uh, to eight years instead of four. So that's the gist of it. No change in cost, just the change in renewal time. Thank you, Senator Chamberlain, and I have uh, Mr. Hines, a deputy registrar from Rochester, is on the uh, testifiers list. If you want to come forward, Mr. Hines. Thank you for coming in this afternoon. Uh, if you would uh, please state your name uh, for the record and then simply proceed with your testimony. <laughs> we'll scooch over. Not Hello, too close, my Mr. name is Mike Hintz, H-I-N-T-Z, with the Minnesota Deputy Registrar's Association. I am also a Deputy Registrar private office in Rochester, Minnesota. Um, we, as an association and as private Deputy Registrars, agree with the idea of an eight-year, um, we have no objection to the idea of an eight-year driver's license. The concern that we have as an organization, as a private business, is that the filing fee that is used or collected on a four-year uh, driver's license or identification card is not a, a specifically addressed in your bill, but it is something that we need to have in the back of your mind is that we survive merely only on those filing fees, and if you're going to double that term, it's kind of important that we consider doubling that filing fee to go along with it. And there is precedence in other legislative and other statutes that show that that, that can happen with uh, some other renewals that have multi-year terms and the filing fee was uh, commensurate with that. So we agree, we have no disagreement with the eight-year term. I change a lot in eight years, but I get a new picture yesterday. I got a new, it worked out well, but I think, it, I think it's a good idea and we have no objection, but we just want to make sure that we keep in mind the filing fee. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Hens. And maybe Senator Jasinski could help us with that question. Uh, thank Senator you, Mr. Chair and Mr. Heinz. Uh, next up, we'll have Senate file number 3616, and I will address that issue. <laughs> Anything further, Mr. Hens? No, that is all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anybody else in the room that wants to testify for or against Senate file 3650? Members, any questions? Pretty quiet group today. Pretty quiet group. Um, this bill, Senator Chamberlain, uh, is to be laid over. Do you have any final comments? No, Mr. Chair. Members, thank you. Short and sweet. Senate file 3650 is laid over. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Senator Chamberlain. Next, we're going to pick up Senator Jasinski's bill, 3616. No, you're fine. Hope we get the sympathy vote. <laughs> Senator Jasinski, is the first now you have testified uh, live in committee this year? Uh, Mr. Chair, no, it's the second time. Second it's time. Okay. First time in transportation, though, so do I have to buy cookies or something? Okay. <laughs> uh, my understanding, uh, Senator Jasinski, on Senate File 3616, you have an author's amendment. Is that correct? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I'd like to offer the A2 amendment. Members, this is an author's amendment. Uh, 
Senator Jasinski, I think it's the 8-2 you want on. 3. 8-3 that you want to. Oh, I'm sorry, correct. Right. I would like to offer the A-3 amendment. Very good. A-3 amendment is an author's amendment. Uh, all those in favor of Senator Jasinski's motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The amendment is adopted. Senator Jasinski. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, we're long past due on hearing this bill. I'll say that a couple of times. We are long past due on hearing this bill. Our deputy registers, both public and private, have been waiting for a long time to see fee increases. Uh, they went through the Minlars situation with lots of issues with the software. They've had to train their people to transition to the MinDrive, which is now working very well, but a lot of time went into that. As you well know, they cannot set their fees as a small business to set their income and revenues versus expenses. Uh, we do that. Uh, so again, this is long past due. I apologize to the deputy registers. Uh, but Mr. King's report uh, showed lots of things. We did a time motion study to several deputy registers across the state uh, to find out what was being done. As many of us in this room know, uh, when we switched over from MinLars to MinDrive, a lot of the front end work got shifted from the back office to our deputy registers. Again, this bill is long past due. They have been not been able to change uh, the fees and they've been doing a lot more work. Uh, so what this bill does is as part of the Rick King report or our independent expert review uh, that addresses several of the issues in the report. Uh, one of the big things, or the first things, is uh, defining what a full service provider is. I'll let uh, Mr. Hill go into the details of this, but that provides what a full service provider is, defines that, uh, goes through some fee increases uh, that, again, I will say are long past due. And it also, uh, one of my most exciting things that I believe is important in this bill, uh, shifts a percentage of the percentage of online and mail-in uh, uh, revenues to our deputy registers. Uh, this is a very, very important thing and, and I'm assuming that DVS or DPS will probably come up and testify against this because anytime an uh, agency has revenue coming in and has to give some of that up, they're going to complain. Uh, so expect that. Uh, but remember what our deputy registers have gone through over the past, I believe, almost six years uh, since I've been in the legislature. We've been talking about this. Uh, so uh, I think that's enough intro to the to the bill. Uh, we've been here for several, several years uh, talking about this. So I'm really, really excited about this bill. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my first testifier, Todd Hill, uh, to testify on the bill. Thank you, Senator Jasinski. And before we go to testifiers, uh, you are correct. This is a bill that we have been waiting for now for a couple of years, and specifically uh, waiting for the uh, driver and Vehicle Services report by Mr. King, Ms. Albus, Ms. Hine, and Ms. Weiss. So this really is, in my mind, a very important step forward following uh, all of those difficulties that we had a few years ago with Minlars. This is sort of one of the culminations of it. So uh, I am going to ask uh, Ms. Stengel to walk us through the bill uh, so that uh, members have uh, a good understanding of what's in this bill and what it's all about. And then I will uh, we'll go to testifiers, and then uh, I'll remind members that uh, uh, the authors of the report are, in, uh, are present. They will be able to answer any questions that you may have. Ms. Stengel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the first section of the bill creates a new definition of what a full service provider is. Um, and that means a person who's appointed by the commissioner as both a deputy registrar and a driver's license agent under chapter 171. And I'll note in a future, a future bill, you'll see some changes to this to um, exempt um, some of the IFTA transactions from that definition. It's not in here, but you'll see that that fix in a later bill that we can put back together at the end when these all get compiled. Uh, section 2 has to do with filing fees for vehicle um, transactions, and you'll see that it's now split out between in-person transactions and then mail or online transactions. And for the mail or online transactions um, that are uh, completed by the department, a portion of those fees will now go into the uh, newly created full service provider account. Section 3 is the same definition as earlier, just in a different chapter of law. 
Section 4 does the same thing as Section 2, only this time it's for driver's license fees, so half of those will now go into the full service provider account if they are mail or online transactions. Section 5 is the fee increases that uh, Senator Jasinski has talked about. And then Section 6 is the new full service provider account uh, that is established and talks about how, how the fees are deposited there. And the A3 amendment that was adopted replaces the paragraph B that was in the bill. Um, so as amended, what will happen is um, the commissioner then, for each of the, the mail or online transaction, the commissioner has to find the closest full service provider and then provide that amount of money to that provider. So it's sort of staying in the area where that person lives. Thank you, Ms. Stengel and, and Senator Jasinski. Uh, are you able to pinpoint the sections in the bill where there is a fee increase and tell us what that increase is without uh, putting you on the spot or? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to Mr. Hill, if he could do that, please. Sure. Uh, Mr. Hill, please uh, identify yourself for the record and proceed with your testimony. Oh, thank you, uh, Chairman Newman and uh, members of the committee. For the record, my name is Todd Hill with Hill Capital Strategies, and I represent the Deputy Register Business Owner Association, or more commonly referred to as the Private Deputy Registers. Let me first say it's great to be testifying in person, and I actually heard a great explanation. I think it was during your Bill and Tax Committee yesterday, Senator Newman. I'm not wearing a tie because apparently over the last two years, my collars of my shirts shrunk, as did the length of my ties. And so <laughs> I don't know what happened. There's a gremlin in my closet or something. But. Uh, so the fee increases, uh, at, per your question, Senator Newman, uh, before I you know, speak more directly to the bill, um, it would be Section 5, and it's actually the amendment that we just adopted, the A2 amendment, uh, changes that a little bit. So um, as the bill is now amended, we would be increasing the, uh, the, the fee that deputy registers or the, would be charged from $8 to $16 for all new applications for all driver's licenses. And then we would be increasing that fee from $8 to $11 for all renewals. And that would be Section 5. It is the, the part of the A2 amendment which was just adopted. Is that okay? Um, as I said, my name is Todd Hill, and I'm here on behalf of the, of the private deputy registers. We have a handful of registers who will also testify today. But um, I wanted to start by we've not had an opportunity to really respond to the, to the King report. You guys did hear that earlier this week. But... Uh, we appreciate all the work that Rick King and his team did, and um, we are grateful for the fact that this report recognizes what we've been saying for a number of years as we've gone through the MinLARS and the MinDrive system, and, and that is that a substantial amount of work has been shifted to the deputy registers, and this report recognizes that and, um, and recognizes that our front counters are becoming overburdened with, with a lot of the work that's been required, and I, I know others are going to testify to that as well. I know the auto dealers and, and other people in this in ecosystem are all feeling that strain, and so um, we appreciate the fact that Senate File 3616 recognizes the need for a new revenue sharing model uh, if you want the deputy register ecosystem or network to survive. Um, there are a couple of challenges with this bill, and, um, and we've had, I've had a number of conversations with Mr. King about this, but um, one is, you know, we have certainly been wishing for some time to have a fee increase on the motor vehicle side. We do think the revenue sharing model addresses that issue. Um, but as part of that revenue sharing model, the bill does also require um, entities that want access to that to become a full service provider, which means you would provide both motor vehicle services and driver's license services. And there are a few challenges with that, and I um, hope something that we can continue to talk about. But um, in some cases, that might not be practical. There are some costs. This bill does consider that. We're going to need some, some compensation for the investment in the cameras and the eye testing machinery and whatnot to move those, uh, those uh, entities that are not full service to a full service provider. Some of these operations are in very small, tight locations where we may need to see some build out. So there are going to be some cost to, to deputies as they make that shift. And the other issue that we do need to be aware of, there have been instances in the past where the department has precluded an entity from becoming a full service provider because there already is a DL operator nearby. And so there may be some, some issues where an entity wants to become full service, but they won't be able to. And we're gonna need to kind of talk through that as we, as we continue to, to work through this bill. Um, 
with that, I, you know, I'll keep my remarks fairly brief as well. I, I just want to thank Senator Drzezinski, Senator Newman, for all the work that we've been doing on this for, I can't tell you how many years. I, six. six years. You know, I'm, the last two years I testified in shorts and a sport coat from my living room. Um, but I'm happy that we're at this critical point in, in looking at the, e, the deputy register ecosystem. We are at a breaking point right now. If we do not pass this bill and fix this today, we are going to see fewer and fewer deputy registers out in the, it, throughout the communities. And as Senator Jasinski pointed out, I think the most important thing for everyone here to remember is that deputy registers, they're probably the only business that exists in the state of Minnesota where they have no ability to change the revenue they make other than by increasing the number of transactions. And they, they don't set the fees, you set the fees. They don't, uh, their costs continue to go up. And you know, every session we come here with our hat in our hand, begging to have some kind of a fee increase. We think that this revenue sharing model resolves a lot of those problems. Um, and we just appreciate all the work that everyone's done on this. And with that, I'd stand for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Hill. And Senator Jasinski, before we uh, go any farther, I really would like to get the bill in terms of these fees that we're talking about uh, uh, corrected so that, that, that we're current. And it's my understanding that Senator Pratt has an amendment, and I think it's the A2 amendment. Uh, and uh, I'll have uh, Ms. Stengel explain the amendment, and then we'll go to uh, you, Senator Pratt. Uh, Ms. Stengel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. It, um, as Mr. Hill talked about, it changes the, the fee increases. So instead of an $8 filing fee, it will now be a $16 filing fee for all types of new applications for driver's licenses or ID, ID cards um, and $11 for a renewal. Senator Pratt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, when we passed the Real ID law back in 2017, the idea was to make sure that the real ID was not any more expensive or, or at a higher cost than the non-compliant ID. We didn't want to have any reason from a cost standpoint to have the differentiation between those two because effectively there's no additional functionality between the licenses except that you can, you can utilize the real ID to get onto, uh, into a federal facility and uh, use your license to, to board a plane, but it doesn't provide anything like the enhanced ID does as far as border crossing or anything like that. So uh, this just this change brings us back to the original intent of the real ID bill to say that the compliant the real ID and the non-compliant license are the same price. Thank you, Senator Pratt. Do you have a motion, Mr. Chair? I move the A2 amendment. Senator Jasinski, any uh, comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, again, in 2017, when uh, Senator Pratt was very involved with the Real ID, I was a, a young freshman senator and and uh, didn't have the whole grasp on it. But I understand what his intent is and would consider this a friendly amendment. Thank you, Gen Senator Jasinski. Members, any questions? Uh, senator Dibble. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I support the amendments. Um, I just thought I'd also point out that uh, I was just trying to compare. Um, the language in the bill as proposed with the A2, and I also noticed that um, it's inclusive of identification cards, not just driver's licenses. Actually, I'm, I'm asking if I'm right about that. I'm not saying I'm right about that. If council can confirm and affirm that I'm making the correct observation. Ms. Stingle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and Senator Dibble. Yes, you are correct that the ID cards are now pulled in um, under the amendment. It was an unintentional omission in the bill drafting. I think they should have been there because it was a filing fee. Oh. Uh, so correcting that. Great. Thank you. Senator Dibble, nice catch. We will fix it on the other end. <laughs> Members, any other questions on the A2? Any comments? Seeing none. Uh, all those in favor of adoption of the A2 amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The amendment is adopted. Okay, Senator Jasinski, uh, 
Mr. Hill. Yep. Senator Newman, uh, first, let me apologize. I, I thought we'd adopted the A2, so I apologize for giving the committee the wrong information uh, on the fee increase. But So, I, so did I. <laughs> staff corrected me. And, and Mr. Hill. I also wanted, there was one other point I wanted to make, um, and it, it, your bill has more of the details on how the account would be set up and the revenue sharing in the account. This bill also establishes that for, for the full service deputy registers. There's one thing I, I, I failed to mention and one concern that we do have, uh, we brought this up with staff earlier today. The state of Minnesota, DVS also operates as a deputy registrar. And we would want to make sure that the state of Minnesota operating as a deputy registrar would not have access to, to, the, to the money that is being set aside for the other deputy registers. Uh, the way that, that the, the bill contemplates dividing up that money now, it's based on transactions. Obviously, the state would uh, conducts way more transactions than we do, but that is one thing that we would like to see clarified as the, as the bill moves forward, okay, which we did you. on the kiosk bill as well. Thank you. Um, next testifier up is uh, Mr. Hintz again, if you want to come to the testifying table. Just come back, come back up. Mr. Hintz, if you would identify yourself for the record and uh, please proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the committee, Mike Hintz, Minnesota Deputy Registrar's Association. Um, just a few things that, uh, uh, to echo a lot of what Mr. Mr. Hill said, um, my first question that I had was about the filing fee or the fee increases. Was that considered the fee increase for a four year identification or an eight year identification? We have said over the past several years that we needed the fee increase because of the amount of work that we're doing to do these other identifications. And that, those numbers properly, I think, address that amount of work that we're doing. But then if we're going to consider doubling to eight years, then those numbers might need to be adjusted to reflect that double term um, on those. Senator Jasinski, or do you want me to go to Senate Council? Uh, Mr. Chair, you can go to Senate Council. Ms. Stengel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, this is for uh, a filing fee for each application. So without the eight-year change, it would be a four-year license. If the other bill were adopted at the same time as this one, it would be these fees for an eight-year. So it's just per application, not tied to the number of years. So Mr. I think what you're saying is if, if the eight-year bill were adopted, you'd like these numbers to be doubled. Mr. Hens. That's correct. Thank you. Anything further, Mr. Hintz? This is my first time doing this. I apologize. It's okay. <laughs> um, again, we talked about the uh, full service deputy registrar offices. Um, the costs involved for some of that would be substantial. Um, right now, currently, if an office wants to go from a limited office to a full service office, they're purchasing their cameras and their vision equipment on their own. Um, and I, th I think that was somewhat addressed that that would be appropriated to help pay for that. But there are build-out costs, training costs, um, security changes that have to be made within the office, things like that. So there are other costs that may need to be either addressed in some sort of a grant or some sort of program to help, the, especially the small offices. If you're talking a twelve dollars to $20,000 build-out for driver's license in an office that does 100 driver's licenses a year, your, your return on investment is years down the road, so it's very difficult for some of those smaller offices to um, to justify that, make it hard to do. Um, the question on the A3 amendment about the appropriation of the money, the question was when would that actually start? Um, would we have to wait a year? Um, and then the appropriation starts out being paid out quarterly, or would there be some sort of um, appropriation right out of the gate to, because now we'd be sitting there at a year spending money going backwards, uh, waiting for that appropriation amount to be figured out. So that was a question that I had. Thank you, Mr. Hintz. Uh, Mr. Zong, do you have uh, any thoughts on that question?
Welcome to the committee. Uh, if you would identify yourself for the record and and uh, uh, see if we can answer that question for folks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Pong Zhang, Director of the Driver Vehicle Services Division. Um, to that question, uh, my, our understanding or our reading of the of the language would be that the transactions would need to be would need to occur, and then the monies would go into that appropriation, and then following uh, quarters could be distributed. Assuming we can get those the systems in place, we could see those transactions for that prior quarter and that next quarter, whenever we establish the the the, the, the starting point for collecting or shifting some of the fees to that separate appropriation. Mr. Hintz, does that answer your question? Mr. Chair, yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shang. Uh, any more questions or any f further testimony, Mr. Hintz? Thank you, Mr. Chair. One more question was the, um, says page five, lines 27 through 34, allowing offices a DL camera from DVS. It currently addresses grandfathered offices back to year 2000. So that's kind of talking about the, uh, uh, the expense of getting a camera if we're gonna have to pay that cost or if the state is going to provide that. That'll have to be written into something. In the line number on page five? Mm -hmm. It's 27 through 34, but I don't have the most recent. Yes, 27 through 34 is where it talks about the cameras. Okay. And your question, Mr. Hintz, is whether the registrars pay for the, the photo identification equipment or whether the state pays for it. Is that correct? It's the department. Most. But do they provide? Who provides? Must provide and maintain photo identification. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Senator Jasinski has shown me it says must. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mr. John, could you come uh, back to the table, please? Thank you. Um, uh, the, the question uh, that is uh, now being discussed is the photo identification equipment, the camera. Uh, and could you share with what your views would be regarding helping out the deputy registrars with these cameras. Mr. Chair, uh, members of the committee, there certainly is a cost to establishing the cameras. We, um, we work with, uh, with a certain type of camera and it has to work with our, the credential uh, provider. Uh, currently in statute, we have sites that are grandfathered before a certain date and, and um, I, I can circle back with, those, with that language. Um, but any of those sites that were grandfathered, we have the authority to maintain and, and support those, those pieces of equipment. For any new sites, we would need some authorization to, to support that. And by authorization, are you talking about legislative action? Mr. Chair, correct. And if the legislature made that authorization, is the department then prepared to purchase and maintain that equipment? Mr. Chair, uh, DVS would need to fund the, the equipment out of our operating account, and so it would need to balance that somehow um, w without having done the analysis. Uh, I, I think it would be fair to say that some, some additional appropriation to the, our operating account to support this would be appropriate. Thank you, Mr. Shang. Mr. Haynes, any uh, comments, questions? Mr. Chair, thank you. No, I understand that Mr. Chong has to research that. That's a pretty substantial number when you do the math. The other piece of that that we would like to make sure is mentioned is the second part of driver's license is the vision tester. Again, that's a piece of equipment um, that's required to do your close-up vision and your peripheral light check. Um, again, a cost would have to be involved uh, that the DVS would have to pay for. We would like to see DVS pay for if that's uh, forced into full service offices. Mr. Zhang, your comments on that question or thought? Mr. Chair, yeah, similar thoughts that um, we definitely, if authorized, we could support and would, would ask for some appropriation to fund that, those uh, purchases. Okay, thank you. Uh, anything further, Mr. Hintz? No, Mr. Chair, thank you. Very good. Um, the next testifier that I have up is Christy Bocage. Thank, 
Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My Welcome name is to the committee. Uh, state your name for the record, and then please proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Newman, and um, thank you, Senator Jasinski. <coughs> Uh, my name is Christy Bocage, and I am Deputy Registrar in South St. Paul and Deputy 35. I am also the president of the Deputy Registrar's Business Owners Association. Um, so I, I'm basically just coming up for um, advocation of support of the bills that are being presented. Um, we have lots of testifiers that have already explained a lot of the things that we might have questions on or maybe some clarification that was needed. Um, we wanted to also say thank you to Mr. King and his team in appreciation of all the work that they pointed out. Some of the things, as has been stated before, we've been um, asking for support for many years. Uh, we also wanted to ensure that we just helped understand some of the things that others have already stated when it comes to what we're required or what will be, kind of to be frank, what will be left with the work that's happening at the deputy registrar. registrar. Most of the easy transactions that has been presented those will go online in a format that is most appropriate for the citizens of Minnesota, and we all want that. And what would be left then is what comes into the offices and what you need help with are those really difficult transactions. And if that is the case, the, the personnel and the staffing that we hire and try to retain, it's at a higher level than it ever has been. So ever since 2017 with the movement of what is being required with those face-to-face -face transactions, but also, since then, we have to have somebody who is able to handle what is left, not just the easy transactions. Renewals would come in, take you a couple of minutes, and out the door you go. You were able to then basically use the funds that were used for that to support those longer transactions. And no longer those easy transactions will be in your house anymore. Therefore, what you have left is all longer transactions. So I just wanted to make sure people understood why we continue to ask for support because we do hire and retain and maintain a staff that uh, is able to handle that. So I just, to point it out, uh, you know, you're looking at somebody who is a higher level, higher qual qualified individual than maybe even five years ago. Um, so uh, again, I just wanted to ensure that people understood how much we're supporting everything. We really appreciate your support and we're advocating for that. And um, that is all I have. I would stand for any questions if you have. Uh, you've described that the easy transactions will probably go online or with the kiosk or something, and you're going to be dealing with the more difficult questions, the more customer uh, service type questions. Uh, have you reviewed the proposed fee increases, and do you feel they meet your needs? The fee structure that it's looking at is kind of a split between some things that will help with some of the longer transactions for driver's license. And again, I think it was just addressed with as long as that uh, is, if it's for four years, and I think you just reiterated that if it moves to an eight-year scenario, then you would need to look at a doubling of that fee in order for it to make sense, because otherwise, effectively, you're losing any type of fee increase, because those are the long transactions, like the real ID. Uh, when it comes to motor vehicle, that has become a lot more laborious when it comes to anything from Minlars. So 2017 on, there's just it's just the input of the work. It's taking a lot longer. And also, like I said, if, if you then were able to filter in some of those easy transactions in between, you were like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm supplementing how long some of these transactions are taking with these easy ones. Therefore, I'm making the money because we're based off of as many as we can do. And similar to what I think Todd had mentioned earlier is that, uh, you know, it, it's, we are only paid on if we can do as many transactions as we can. So if all the easier ones go out online or go to a kiosk, and every transaction that we have is a 25, 30, sometimes even a 45 minute transaction, that $11 that we're getting right now starts to shrink very much so. So I think when it looks at uh, the fee sharing, scenario that that would allow us to then be able to try to hire and maintain staff in order to be able to handle what would take longer periods of time. Mr. King, uh, do you, Ms. Albus, Ms. Hines, or Ms. Weist, have any thoughts or comments that you'd like to share with us regarding what Ms. Bocage has had to say? Well, I'll have somebody get you a, 
a, a chair. Here, there's a chair coming. Okay. All right, there we go. I can move. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mr. King. Thank you for the chair, Mr. Chair. I can move, but it's not so easy. Right. <laughs> um, I, I think uh, I would simply say that uh, there's really no disagreement at large with what has been testified to here relative to the deputy registrars. I might make a couple of a, a couple of points. Um, you know, just for a frame of reference for everybody, the, the cameras are about uh, $7,900 um, right now, and the iMachines are about $1,900. So you're looking about ten thousand, a little bit under $10,000 for the people that don't already have them and need them and so forth. And we would um, we would be supportive of uh, what Director Pong is. Uh, as uh, Zong has asked for in that regard. It makes sense not to have uh, the first instance of them unnecessarily charged to uh, to uh, the deputy registrars. I think in terms of the office facilities, um, I guess I have a little bit smaller business thought in my head. Um, I would take a line and I would make the line do both kinds of transactions, vehicle and drivers. I'd hang up a piece of blue background wall uh, with some tape across a back of a wall and that's where the photos would be. So I would simplify that whole thing and not have to do a tremendous amount of build out. I think it, the build out is, is sort of non-existent and I think to the extent that they have a limited number of um, people coming in, then that's just fine. You have the training and the certification of course, that is some cost and the security of course, that's some cost. But the person at the at the counter could handle both transactions. When somebody comes in, they've got one, they've got the other. So I don't think the physical build out is is as big uh, a big as big an issue. Our our issue was trying to make sure that we've got um, with with a reduction in the number of uh, exam stations that we propose that we've got through the state a really good number of of uh, deputy registrars that are doing full service, which includes the driver's license which tends to be the most complicated, as was stated here by uh, each of the colleagues. Um, and I think the online fee sharing part is really geared toward um, helping out around the vehicle registration piece. Rather than increasing the fee writ large, taking a percent of those fees that are done online and giving them back to the deputy registrars because they are asked questions about duplicates, Where's, where is my item, it's lost in the mail, um, should I get a two-year, should I get a one-year, should I get an 18-month, whatever the question is, ends up being really a local question, whether by phone, by email, or um, with an in-person visit. So when you give them that shared online fee or in-the-mail fee, that's meant to help them there. And incidentally, since we're already collecting that fee and it goes into the special revenue fund, that's not an increase to the customer, the consumer, the citizen, which is nice the driver's license part will impact um, the citizens. Um, as to uh, the question about the, um, the multi-year license, obviously uh, we, we suggested that. Um, 14 different states use eight years, just incidentally. Seven states use six years. Eight states use five, and there's six that use four out of the survey that we got information back. So four tends to be the lower of, of those numbers out there. So we think it's a good idea to look at a lengthening of that. We did not speak directly to the idea of, of the fee. Quite often when you, not, not the, um, the filing fee we're talking about here, um, I think that's a good debate to be had. Um, whether it should be doubled or whether it should be increased some amount, I don't think one time, maybe when you go from four years to eight, to leave it the same is the right thing. I'm not sure two times the fee is the right either, but there's a lot of room between the two to say that um, servicing that customer in between the eight years, is they're still gonna come back to the deputy registrar. So in our heads, we discussed at one point whether we should make a recommendation about that, which we did not, but we were thinking in the range of 1.5 times to 1.75 times just as a ballpark for your information. So we do support the idea that there should be um, more there. Um, Mr. Chair, um, that's kind of covering what a lot of the testifiers covered. I think Ms. Wise may want to add one 
particular piece, if you'll permit that. Thank you, Mr. King. Ms. Weiss, welcome back to the committee. Thank you can you. sneak right into that microphone. <laughs> All right. Mr. King will move a little bit for you. All Thank right. You. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, I would also like to just, um, I think, reiterate sort of our collective support for um, Senator uh, Jasinski's bill. Um, the area where I thought maybe I could offer just a little bit of additional color commentary is around what our original proposal was with respect to the filing fees. Um, so the original view was around an $8 increase from $8 to $16. Um, we had focused on new real IDs and new enhanced driver's licenses um, purely from a filing fee perspective because of the complexity of the work and the transaction. Um, again, no objection to um, anything as proposed, but just as context, the $8 increase for those was particularly focused around that additional effort and work. Um, and then uh, similarly, the $3 renewal for, um, or the $3 increase from $8 to $11 for the renewal was similarly around the work in that category. Um, and that appeared to be the area looking at numbers across um, all of the deputy registrars as well as um, time and motion studies previously completed. Those seem to be the areas where there was kind of that additional chunk of work. Thank you, Ms. Wise. Before they leave the testifying table, members have any questions for Ms. Okaj, Mr. King, or, Mr. or Ms. Weiss? Seeing none, thank you very much. Hang around, there might be more. Thank you, Ms. Okaj. Thank you. Next testifier I have is Kelly Davison. Kelly Davison has either not here or isn't coming up to testify, I'm not sure which. Um, and then uh, Mr. Zhang. Welcome back to the uh, testifying table. Mr. Zhang, uh, just for the record, state your name and then uh, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Pong Zhang, Director of the Driver and Vehicle Services Division. So first I want to thank Senator Jasinski um, and uh, other authors of bills related uh, that came from the uh, Independent Expert Review Report. Um, we are, we were very supportive in the work that Mr. King and his team has done. And also I want to extend my, uh, my gratitude to Mr. King and his team uh, for the work done on the Independent Expert Review. So on to uh, Senate File 3616. Uh, DVS does not have any concerns with, uh, with the fee increases. Uh, we believe that deputy registrars should be compensated fairly for the work that they perform. Uh, DVS does have concerns uh, around the fee sharing uh, provisions. Uh, the fee, the online transactions and mail in transactions are performed exclusively by state employees through state processes. Um, additionally, the uh, sharing of, of, of fees related to online and mail in transactions will have a, a, an impact to the overall uh, health of the vehicle services operating account, uh, the driver service, services operating account, as well as the technology account. Uh, we'll, we'll be putting together some estimates in our fiscal note to get you the exact numbers, but we are estimating multi-million dollar uh, uh, amounts uh, based off of current online transactions and mailed-in transactions. And uh, we have certainly seen an increase in those types of transactions um, and customers. Uh, we w definitely want to meet customers where they, where they uh, want to uh, interact with DVS and, and the services that we provide. Um, and lastly, we do. I want to address a concern around the uh, amendment around the address and tracking of addresses. Uh, not specifically the, the methodology, but the the tools in which we're able to comp to do this will will be new for MinDrive. Uh, in in our discussions with our our uh, technology team and our and our vendor, Fast, uh, this will require some sort of uh, of of um, 
a tool that can calculate the distances between locations. Uh, we also think that it's necessary to define which address we're going to be using in the language. Um, but I, uh, DVS wanted to offer those concerns uh, for the language. Um, and lastly, I just want to uh, make the commitment that we are, DBS is prepared to continue to engage and support in the development of, the, of this bill, and I will stand for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Zahn. Mr. King, uh, would you or any member of your team uh, care to come forward? Uh, I'd like to visit with you a little bit about uh, what Mr. Zhang has just testified to. Thank you, Mr. King. Uh, keeping in mind that you know, these bills, including this bill, uh, what we really are trying to do is, is uh, take recommendations, some of them are fairly general, uh, out of the report that has been prepared. And as you know, uh, one of my ongoing concerns has always been uh, the payment for MinDrive. Uh, the request for fee increases by a deputy registrar is an anticipated uh, request for uh, increased appropriations from DVS. That's always been my concern. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts uh, on uh, the fee sharing provision that is in this bill that we have derived from your report. And I'd also ask if you could uh, please uh, uh, address the uh, tracking of addresses uh, within MinDrive. I'm not even sure I understand that that portion. If you could maybe talk about that, but those two questions, Mr. King. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I'll do the best I can with those. Um, the fee sharing, uh, we we think um, we think that's pretty important. And while we discussed the parameters of the fee sharing. Um, we also had concern for the two accounts. In this case, it would be the, the vehicle account, so the vehicle services operating account. We definitely are concerned about that. That's one of the major reasons we put in the recommendation sharing 25 to 50 percent of the fee, because we needed to make sure that um, what was coming into that account, which is every single online and mail transaction, uh, that those are the transactions not done by the uh, deputy registrars, it goes into that fund. It never gets appropriated to anybody directly for that service because it's done by um, Mr. Zong's employees. And true enough, as he said, we believe there's enough money in the account uh, to fund somewhere in that 25 to 50 percent sharing range, and that since the fee is coming from that customer for the filing fee, it's an appropriate use of that actual um, that actual money um, we would if for some reason the 25 percent made us drop below the reserve levels in the account we would say drop the 25 percent to a lower number we don't want to cause harm to the to that operating account but we think that within a number that's between 25 and 50 there's there's a place there that you can that you can go and that fee sharing is important because this goes back to the deputy registrars for the work that they do to support people in transactions that aren't just one and done. They have follow-ups, they have questions, and so forth, as I said earlier. But we also proposed um, an element of fee sharing to defray some of the costs at DVS, too, through the same mechanism. Um, so that mechanism would help them by transaction, on a transaction basis, fund the ever-increasing number of online and mail renewals so that they don't have to appeal for deficit funding because of an overrun in the postage area through no fault of anybody except keeping the lights on and being able to process people. That budgeted normal appropriation that they would get was overrun, and you heard that, I think, earlier um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, in terms of the deficit funding. So what we tried to do with our fee sharing is help um, the department with that element, which is a lot of postage and handling and service by a transaction late based level, and help the deputy registrars uh, with, the f with a sharing of that fee that's already collected. Um, so, Mr. Chair, that would be 
the answer to question number one. Um, question number two about the tracking of addresses. Now, I think this comes into play when you decide how you would allocate the fees that are kept for the deputy registrars. So one of the earlier uh, versions of this bill called for the, a proportional amount of the transactions um, based on what's done in each deputy registrar office to then be sent to those deputy registrars pro rata, basically. So at that point, you don't need to know the addresses of the people who actually had the service performed for them and actually funded the fees. What that is sometimes maybe a precision level here with a transaction basis proportionally, not exactly what everybody would think would be maybe the best. The alternative is to then divide it up um, from the geography that it came from. So think of that if a certain region of the state, um, a person made the, the online or the mail um, request for uh, tabs or plates or whatever it is, um, you would determine where they were and you would then be giving the fees to that um, local registrar. And we talked about at one point with uh, different groups about using zip plus four as an example of how to figure out where you'd bring that uh, fee back to. Um, the difficulties that were discussed previously here are all around figuring out how do you relate the payer of that fee to the deputy registrar that gets that fee. Um, I actually thought it was pretty brilliant that your council wrote the proportional distribution would solve that whole thing. We didn't have to know their addresses. I don't know how whether that's more precise or less precise at the end of the day, but I could see people arguing about, well, that's my zip code, that's my plus four, that's really, that's wrong. And so I got to the point where I really enjoyed the way the council wrote the document. Um, it can be done in a variety of different ways, but I think that is illustrating Mr. Zong's concern because how do you determine that? You'd probably start with a postal service plus four and then you'd have to make some decisions off of that and that would have to be incorporated into the FAST software. Thank you, Mr. King, and I agree. Our council is brilliant. I absolutely <laughs> agree. Um, uh, before Mr. King or Mr. Zhang uh, leave the testifying table, any questions for them from any members? Senator Dibble. Thank you. Not necessarily a question. Just wanted to put a pin in, in some of the points made by Mr. King and some of the questions you had as well. Um, you know, I, <clears throat> I appreciate the, uh, the, the, the ideas that have been put forth by uh, Senator Dzinski and uh, the deputy registrars and the like. But I think we need, you know, I'm, I'm glad we're holding these bills over for more thought and more ideas and more deliberation because I'm not sure we've gotten quite there. I haven't been fully persuaded on um, the amount of, if any, revenue sharing. I think the point that the agency raises that the DRs don't even touch these transactions, you know, um, so, um, so what is the proper amount to be shared, you know, from that revenue? I just think about at some point in the future when you're, we're gonna be getting to a de minimis number of in-person transactions that occur, will we still be then you know, having the, the deputy registrars enjoy 70% of, of online and, and mail-in transactions. Um, I think that would, you know, I think about the public and how they would respond to that. I mean, we're gonna move there at some point. Um, and, um, and then just, you know, kind of the, the mechanism of pinpointing, assuming for the sake of discussion that we all agree that this is a good idea, um, uh, you know, pinpointing how we make that allocation on an office-to-office -office basis. I'm, I'm not sure that the methodology is quite there yet. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Dibble. And, uh, you know, you've outlined exactly why we are having these conversations and why the bills are uh, going to be held over. And, and we will be having further discussions on it because... Uh, you're right, we're not quite there yet, but we're working on it. And we now have something 
uh, you know, a, t a tool that we can use to try and arrive at the right decision because it really is important to these folks that we arrive at the right uh, at the right decision. Uh, Senator Kent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, I just want to, um, I did not, we were running out of time when uh, Mr. King and his wonderful team presented the other day. So I'm going to use this opportunity to express my very deep appreciation for the very good work that you guys have done um, with this report, which we're seeing um, come into action here. Um, I really agree. I think we're starting some very important conversations um, about how we um, balance things out. You know, even before MinLARS, uh, we recognized that the legacy system had um, created opportunities for um, weight efficiencies that went away once we started moving into these newer systems. And we knew, I mean, this is, this is not news. We knew that it was going to create more front end uh, work. And I'm so glad that we're finally aligning the actual work and the, the, the costs associated with that and, and writing some of those um, imbalances that have been created um, with this new technology and these new systems and also the new requirements of things like Real ID. Um, so, you know, I think that becomes a really good measuring stick to, you know, to, 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 as we have these conversations to make sure that we are staying fairly consistent with that um, as, our, as our approach so that the resources, the human work that it takes to to do a part of this whole project um, is, is what is compensated. And um, when we run into these questions of sharing and making sure that it all balances out, you know, I think that's a good guideline um, to continue following. Thank you, Senator Kent. Um, I do not see any further questions from members. Uh, one final comment, uh, Mr. Zhang. Um, the, just a request on my part, the sooner you get to us, your requested appropriation, the better. Uh, we would really appreciate it because obviously we have some balancing and weighing and further discussions uh, that will be coming in the near future. We've got a little bit of time because bills are spinning off going to other committees. They're going to be coming back. Uh, but the sooner you could get that to us, uh, the more uh, I, would, I would appreciate it very much. Uh, Mr. Zhang, thank you very much for coming in. Uh, Mr. King, uh, I do not have any further uh, testifiers. Anyone else in the audience that wishes to testify for or against this bill? And I am not seeing anyone. Uh, Senator Jasinski. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate all the conversation today. Again, want to thank Mr. King, uh, DPS, DVS, uh, something that I had written down on my sheet, uh, and Senator Kent actually just said it, it all balances out. We need to balance out these uh, transactions so that it makes fair to everybody. Again, also going back to a, a couple years back, I remember former uh, Director Corey saying about how valuable these deputy registers are to the system and what they do for our communities to get that done. And again, I'll once again say this is long past due, and I really hope that we can get this across the finish line this year. Uh, we've been I don't say promising, but we've been talking about these fee increases for several years uh, to these deputy registers, both, both public and private. So our cities and our counties, as well as private businesses, uh, we've been affecting uh, with these fee increases. So I think it's time. I'd like to get it done. Again, want to thank everybody involved um, and look forward to more discussion to get this bill across the finish line. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Jasinski. And, uh, uh, we are going to do our best. We really are. Uh, with that, uh, Senate file 3616, as amended, is laid over. Next bill on our agenda is Senator Eichhorn. I, there you are. I didn't even see you over there. Senator Eichhorn's bill 3667. <coughs> Senator Eichhorn, welcome to the committee. Whenever you're ready to your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for the opportunity uh, to present to your committee today. 
Um, I have Senate file 3667, and I'd like to thank my co-sponsors, Senator Coran, Lang, and Dibble. There is one extra spot on the bill if anybody's interested in getting on the bill as well. What this will do is uh, direct the DNR and the Commissioner of Public Safety to work with the deputy registers to try to see if there's an opportunity to move boat, ATV, and snowmobile registration uh, from the current system that the DNR has to the MIN drive system. We believe that uh, this would allow the deputy registers to use one system rather than toggling between separate systems uh, and would create a better, better operation and better customer service. The bill would require that they report back to the legislature by December 15th, 2022, detailing the estimated costs, the estimated timeline, and necessary statutory changes. And this was uh, recommendation number 17 from the independent expert review. And that is all I have on the, this bill. It's a pretty short, simple bill, Mr. Chair. Forgot my mic. Uh, Ms. Covey, uh, for testimony on this bill, and I am not. Oh, that really doesn't like, look like her, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll take you, Mr. Meyer. <laughs> I apologize, Mr. Chair. <laughs> please, please, please state your uh, name for the record and, uh, and with uh, whom you are affiliated, and, and please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Bob Meyer, Assistant Commissioner, Department of Natural Resources, and it's a pleasure to be here today. Jenna Covey is our, our Chief Technical Information Officer. She was going to be online. She must have had something else come up, so I don't know if she's there or not. But I can briefly testify to the bill. We have been working with MinDrive and, and DPS in these conversations to date. We're currently in the process of, of updating our uh, electronic licensing system, which includes our hunting and, and fishing license system. Our, our motorized recreational vehicle license system and also our firearm education and safety education training system. This is a critical part of it. We're looking at the recommendations right now and working with DPS. We've had several meetings on it to see how it will integrate. We do have several concerns though about the, the language in the bill. Um, first off, by December 15th of 2022, um, that's pretty quickly and the bill wouldn't go into effect till August of 2022, so that leaves us Know, five months to do the report. We are having these conversations ongoing. It's critical to make sure that our system integrates with everything that's out there. I'm hopeful that we can use the MinDrive process to record and transfer these titles, uh, that they can scan them and send us the information we need. This is a critical efficiency piece that's out there and working to ensure that we have one system I think would be beneficial. Uh, the other thing that's, that's out there is just making sure it fits in with our timelines of an RFP. Uh, we're hoping to release that RFP for the entire system this spring, and that will take uh, several months to reply. We're, we're hoping to select a vendor by the end of the calendar year, and it'll take several years to build that system that are integrated to update it to the Minnesota's customization. We're moving to a, a mobile system with our hunting and fishing licenses is critical. We hear that from our, our customers all the time and integrating some efficiencies in our, in our motorized vehicle registration and transfer system is gonna be a huge part of that. So we support the concept. Uh, the timelines are somewhat of a concern. And then the funding piece, I know we can deal with that, what it would cost later on. But um, coming out of the pandemic and with the hiring freeze that was there, we're still trying to build up our staff that, that retired during uh, the pandemic and staffing could be an issue just to meet the timelines there. So we look forward to having those conversations in the future, but again, we do support the concept. We are closely working with the recommendations in the report to make sure that whatever we have in our next generation is the best in the country. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Uh, Mr. King, did you have uh, some comments on this bill? Mr. King. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, E.C. Meyer's testimony, I thought, was uh, very good, and it's good. Um, we found that uh, in conversations with DNR, um, in fact, I had a conversation today with the commissioner about this very topic, and we have another um, breakfast meeting next week. So I think DNR understands uh, that this is something that needs to be looked at, and we'll be looking at it um, quite seriously. So I 
we, as the IER, the independent review, wanted that to happen. Um, we've oftentimes found that opportunities get missed like this, and we go on to building something that's another uh, system and part of which we might not need. So whether that's true or not um, goes um, to the end of what their RFP process is, what their business requirements are, and things like that, which we appreciate. The one thing that I'll add, the, um, the A1 amendment changes the tone quite a bit. Um, it says the word must, and I think that's a very difficult word in there. Um, the original language called for a report on it, and I think um, maybe the report is a very light dust, and the must word is maybe a very heavy word. Um, what I would suggest to the, um, to the committee is that language there that could be somewhere in the middle, that there, has, there should be an extensive review and look and yeah, Mr. King, I'm going to gently inter, uh, just let Ms. Stengel visit with you for a second. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Am I speaking to the wrong committee about the A1? Perhaps. Excuse it will me. not be offered in this committee. Well, we'll save the tape for some. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Uh, I apologize, uh, Mr. That's, Chair. That's, that's just fine. So let me rewind to say that, um, you know, the report is a good thing, but I think for a report, um, it, that report will take a lot of time. I'd, I'd like to see, as part of the RFP that they're doing, that they are encouraged to include um, the, the review of MinDrive in that report and that they, in that RFP, and then they make a determination and maybe a special note to this committee about um, what they actually found when they go through their RFP process. I think that's the way to keep them tracking on their schedule, to and I think that's a way that they probably be amenable. Sorry you, about the A1 diversion. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. King. Uh, Senator Eichhorn, any comments regarding the the issue that uh, the DNRI has brought up regarding the timing and the timeline? Uh, I think what we have in the bill is fine. I did talk with Mr. Meyer earlier today and the commissioner. We also did talk about the A1, and I did agree not to offer that today, but to continue the conversation on the, that and the underlying bill just to make sure that discussion continues so we end up in a good good spot so we do make sure that they are having those conversations so we don't end up in another Minlar situation where we're spending a bunch of money and end up with something we don't need. So I think this is good policy and I appreciate the work that the independent committee did and I, I think this is a good recommendation and, and happy to move forward with it. Sounds like you clued everybody in except Mr. King. <laughs> we didn't talk to Mr. King yet today. Uh, members, any questions for Senator Eichhorn uh, or Mr. King? Senator Dibbles. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Senator Eichhorn. I'm glad to be uh, on this bill. Um, I just wanted to kind of express the similar sentiment to Mr. King. Um, well, on the one hand, um, it, it's probably likely that this is a good idea and this is the direction which DNR should go. Um, uh, MinDrive is working well and uh, we're really happy about it. Um, and it just would make sense that, you know, boats and snowmobiles and ATVs would enjoy the same benefits of the kinds of efficiencies and ease of use, et cetera. Um, that being said, um, so, you know, kind of pushing them and prodding them along is the right thing to do. Um, sounds like the A1 is gonna show up or some variation on the A1 is gonna show up at a future point in time. And so to find that, that right calibration to, um, can, you know, because Lord knows, you know, my first bill this morning, I'm, you know, not beyond pushing agencies <laughs> when they need to be pushed, when they're resistant to change, but um, on the other hand, allowing for the thoughtful deliberation so that, you know, we're not violating standard procurement policies and procedures so that we are finding that we're doing the right thing with the best value for um, our shared constituents. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Dibble. Uh, members, any other comments or questions on Senator Eichhorn's bill? Senator Howe. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair and Senator Eichhorn. I, I think this is an, a, a good suggestion and a good bill. Uh, and I, I don't know if uh, Mr. King would like to respond to this, but I, we talked earlier, but uh, 
I think we've missed something when we talk about the, the DNR piece and when we track uh, our boats because we track the trailer, we track the boat, but we don't track the most expensive piece on that apparatus, which is the motor. Now, we, when we talk about our motorcycles, when you register your motorcycle, you got to have the serial number of the motor, of the engine, on that registration card. But we don't do that with our boat motors. And I think it behooves us to do this. And the reason it's, it was brought to me, it was brought to me by the chief of police uh, who had a marine dealer who was exchanging and selling motors on boats that were stored at his facility. And the only way they really caught up with it is those motors ended up in Iowa, some of them, and Iowa tracks theirs. And that's how they caught up with this. So I think it would behoove us to track the most expensive piece of those marine vehicles, which is the motor. And all it takes is an additional line or two, because some places have more than one motor, of course, uh, but we should probably track those very expensive uh, pieces of apparatus. And I don't know if you looked into that when you looked at other states, but uh, to see how that could be done. Mr. King, any thoughts on that? It actually sounds like a pretty good idea to me. Uh, would it be difficult to include the information regarding the motor in this registration system? Uh, Mr. Chair and Senator Howe, um, we did not look at this at all. So I would get myself into literally deep water without one of those engines by making a comment um, about it. I, it seems logical to think about. I agree. I just don't have any insight about it. Um, but I now have another breakfast topic for next week. Very good. Thank you, Mr. King. Thank you very much. Senator Eichhorn. Mr. Chair, I will say that Senator Howe also mentioned that idea, that concept to me, and I, I agree with you, Mr. Chair, that it is a good idea to look into. And as we look to develop an amendment for the next committee stop, I hope to have a, a conversation with Mr. Meyer about that as well to see how we might be able to integrate that because I agree that is a good idea and something we should be doing. Good. Very good. Uh, any other members? Oh, Senator Kent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, just real quickly to chime in on that one. Um, and this also seems like it would be a good time to entertain that conversation as we're looking to make these changes um, to factor that into the to that process. Um, it makes sense. I want to go back to, um, again, the good work done by Mr. King and his team. And one of the things that was so compelling to me throughout the report was um, the customer focus that ultimately the work we are doing here is to serve the people of Minnesota. Um, and so, you know, as long as we maintain that lens, as we uh, consider this aspect of it, um, that side to me is, is should be the, the, the guiding focus with the other um, caveat that the mission of driver and vehicle services is not exactly the same as the mission of the DNR, um, although there obviously are a lot of overlaps. But um, you know, I think as long as we just remember, and that's why the you know this I think this makes sort of intuitive sense. Uh, if people are registering vehicles of any type for Minnesotans to have a consistent experience and expectation, that seems to make a lot of sense. But I appreciate you know giving everybody the time to think this through and make sure we make. Um, solid decisions. So it seems like a good idea to proceed. Thank you, Senator Kent. I do not see any other hands up regarding comments from senators. Uh, and this bill um, has to go to finance. I wonder, Senator Coleman, do you have a motion where you could uh, uh, ask that this yes. matter be re referred to uh, the environment? I'm sorry, the environment and finance committee. Yes, Mr. Chair, I move that Senate file 3667 pass and be re-referred to the Environment Finance Committee. Thank you, Senator Coleman. Uh, all those in favor of Senator Coleman's motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The motion passes. Senator Eichhorn, you are on your way to the Environment Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, we have uh, one more bill I'm going to try and get through today. It's 430, but I think this is going to be a fairly quick bill. Uh, if this would be Senator Coleman's bill, uh, Senate file 3670.
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I can be brief. Now it's up to all of you how brief we get out of here. And before you, uh, before is, you've got an, an A2 amendment. Am I correct on that? Yes, Mr. Chair. And is that an author's amendment? Yes, sir. Uh, a little. Yeah, it's it's uh, actually uh, I'm sorry, Senator Coleman. See, it's the A1 amendment. Uh, looks like it's a delete all authors amendment. Uh, A1, yes, Mr. Chair. Yeah, all those in favor of Senator Coleman's motion to adopt the A1 delete all authors amendment, please signify by saying aye. aye. Well, one moment. Oh. We're going we're gonna to just take a slight pause here. We've got, I'm not sure we're on the right amendment. My apologies, Senator Coleman. I think we've got it straightened out. It's the A2 amendment that is your uh, delete all authors amendment. Uh, Senator Dibble, thank you for thank you. stopping the vote. I appreciate that. Uh, all those in favor of Senator Coleman's motion to adopt the A2 amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The A2 amendment is adopted. <laughs> Senator Coleman, to your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, this is a very straightforward bill. It is based off recommendation eight in the independent expert review. The bill simply requires DVS to track and report on the pass fail rate and the amount of attempts for the written and road tests based off each driver training school. DVS must then publicly post the info on their website and update it at least twice a year. There are no uh, testifiers signed up on this bill. Uh, members, any questions? I am not seeing any. Um, and members, this bill will be laid over. Senator Coleman, any final thoughts? No, Mr. Chair. That is a <laughs> succinct summation. Senate file uh, 3670 as amended is laid over. And that is as far as we are going to uh, go on today's agenda. We will pick up the balance of the bills next week uh, and, uh, and uh, complete the work uh, on the driver and vehicle services report insofar as these individual bills are concerned. Uh, with that, and uh, with that, uh, uh, Mr. King, uh, Ms. Albus, Ms. Hines, Ms. White, Thank you again for coming in today. Um, you know, I, I suspect that there are other places that you might rather be, but having you here is very, very helpful. So we do, we really do appreciate it. With that, uh, we are adjourned. <laughs>